I thought my colleague Matt Gates made a great point in committee a couple weeks ago. He said, when is the FBI not going to influence an election? 2016, they spied on President Trump's campaign. 2018, it was the Mueller investigation. 2020, they suppressed that Hunter Biden story, called it Russian disinformation. And in 2022, they raid the home of a former president 91 days before the midterm election. So why don't the FBI just stay out and quit being political and let the country decide, let the people decide who's going to represent them? That sounds like a good idea, uh, Congressman Jim Jordan. And today on Capitol Hill, the House of Representatives, the FBI director with the permanent sneer on his face, Christopher Ray, is testifying under oath. But, you know, you can lie under oath to Congress with alacrity today, and it doesn't lead to anything. I do want to address uh, what Chris was talking about, our, our last caller, our valued caller. And he was talking about the, uh, the school teacher in Texas. We've played the audio for you. Amber Parker, 53-year-old woman. They uh, you always put the age in there like it's, uh, it's a big factor. But Amber Parker, we played the, uh, we played the audio. Uh, teacher in a high school classroom talking about pedophiles and child molesters. And, and, um, and what Chris was saying was that Amber Parker... I think he said lifelong Republican who was uh, making a dramatic point and and uh, being provocative. And you may remember what Amber Parker said in the high school classroom. You can hear the kids uh, grumbling and objecting in the classroom at the time. Amber Parker was fired from her job uh, as a result of this video emerging. We're not going to call them that. We're going to call them maps. No. Minor attracted persons. No. So don't judge people just because they want to have sex with a five-year-old. See, don't judge people just because they want to have sex with a five-year-old. Now, the uh, the newspaper out of the United Kingdom, known as the Daily Mail, they call themselves the Daily Mail, uh, September 14th of 2022, that's last year, they uh, came out with the story, husband of Texas teacher fired for defending pedophiles in class and calling them minor attracted people. I think it was minor attracted persons, but uh, says she was taken completely out of context. That's what the husband said after his wife was fired. Amber Parker, 53 years old, taught English at Franklin High School in El Paso, Texas, and was leading a discussion about Arthur Miller's play, The Crucible. See? And uh, you heard what she just said there. But the husband uh, of the teacher after she was fired said, no, 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 she was taken out of context. She wasn't actually advocating. It's a an 18-second video clip. We play the audio portion because we're on the radio. And and the husband says, no, 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 that's, uh, that's not what was going on here at all. Jason Parker, her husband of 30 years, said uh, they were left shaken by the fallout. I bet why she was fired because this thing says, shaken to the core about these accusations he wrote on Facebook. He wrote on the Facebook. It's both scary and disturbing that an edited 18-second clip could destroy a 30-year career when taken completely out of context. Now, I hope that's not the case. It would be terribly unfair if that uh, is the case. And uh, Jason Parker said his wife was dedicated to her students, condemned the decision to fire her. I would imagine she's as exemplary as a teacher and truly cares about the students, he said. Needless to say, we've spent many sleepless nights because of this cruel release to social media of the 18 seconds. That's what the husband said. Now, um, I really can't speak to whether this is the burning bush of truth or not. I hope that she was not taken out of context and fired unjustly there was a uh, there was a, a a student now this this story does not say that she's a republican or a lifelong republican or uh, anything like that and it's the daily mail and they're you know they're generally uh, pretty good i've got to say um but the the husband has a vested interest as well um and uh you know they just lost their income her income from the household as well. Uh, but they, one of the students also jumped in and said that she was making a, that she was making a point. Ryan Ruvalcaba, uh, junior at the high school, uh, said, 
Uh, she is talking about the teacher. She expressed how it was ridiculous how how we might not be able to call people pedophiles. Said that we will probably have to start calling them maps because it can be offensive to call them pedophiles. And uh, and he says, and the class the class agreed. Now the uh, I I can't uh, speak to who's telling the truth here or not, honestly. And you'd think if you had, um, you know, like a television news channel or something, you might, uh, you might want to sort this out. The husband says, and then the, the student, one student, quoted in the Daily Mail, says she was trying to make a point of how ridiculous is it. Now, if that's true, that might explain why she was fired, because they wouldn't want people talking about how ridiculous it is. <laughs> um, so I hope that she was not wronged. I sincerely hope that she was not wronged. Really. Now, with that said, uh, I told Chris I'd look it up, and I did. Um, and uh, that at least I've done that much uh, thus far. Uh, and I hope that the, that the lady wasn't uh, wrongly taken out of context and lost her job because of, uh, of a fake story. It's not out of the question for sure. So, Chris, thanks for giving me a heads up on that. And uh, I will doubtless look into it further as well. But I'm not going to take the husband at, uh, uh, you know, his uh, couple of comments at face value either, um, because who knows? Who knows? Now, Christopher Ray, the FBI director, who I don't think is a good guy, my instinct on him from the very beginning was very negative, and I go with my instincts because my instincts have been very, very good to me. And, um, and uh, Christopher Ray, the FBI director, uh, strikes me as not a good guy, not a good guy. Now, there is a Republican congressman from Wisconsin by the name of Tom Tiffany. Tom, uh, Tom Tiffany is on the committee and in the hearing today where Christopher Ray is testifying, and he's uh, taking a lot of questions. Now, the Democrats are trying to shoot down and, and uh, disrupt the hearing. Jerry Nadler, uh, Wadler, as he's commonly known, Jerry Nadler is in there. And he's like, this is a circus. This is show business. This is and uh, this is theater. And then he he showed up dressed like Queen Victoria and did high kicks on the table and turn turn kick turn. He didn't really. I just made up the last part because he couldn't do a high kick uh, to save his life. But never mind that. Uh, Jerry Nadler and other Democrats are trying to disrupt the hearing because you know the FBI has been serving the interests of the Democrat Party for years now and has been detrimental to the Republican Party. So naturally, the Democrats, because uh, it's not their oxen being gored here. It is the Republican Party that has suffered at the hands of a corrupt FBI, corrupt FBI leadership, certainly, uh, year after year, as the Jim Jordan audio that we just played uh, laid out. I mean, the FBI going to Twitter and Facebook on the lead-up to Joe Biden's 2020 presidential election and telling them that, oh, uh, the... The Hunter Biden laptop story in the New York Post had all the earmarks of Russian disinformation. They knew perfectly well that it uh, that it was entirely legitimate. They were among the first to have the the Hunter Biden laptop. They had spoken to Tony Bobulinski. They knew all the emails were real. They knew that the Hunter Biden laptop was really the Hunter Biden laptop. They knew it was all uh, true. And then they spread the lie, the FBI did, and they tampered in the uh, 2020 presidential election. They meddled in the election. They were involved in corrupting the election. Now let's go to Tom Tiffany, Congressman Tom Tiffany, Republican from Wisconsin, this morning on the Fox News Channel, um, talking about the FBI and some questions that he might have today for FBI Director Christopher Wray. So I'm going to start uh, with the Durham report, which we had uh, Special Counsel Durham before us two weeks ago, and I asked him, was there a Russia collusion? And he said no. Russia collusion was a hoax. And then we're going to go all the way up and talk about targeting, censoring, and suppressing. That is what the FBI has been doing. And it's misleading for him to say, oh, you know, the fine people of the FBI. We know there's fine people of the FBI, but the leadership is rotten to the core. Rotten to the core, but great to the Democrat Party. That's an old, like, Marine Corps uh, joke. That's the, <laughs> well, that's, a, uh, that's another thing now. Uh, Christopher Ray testifying now uh, before the House Judiciary Committee, and um, 
You know, the news media it represents the interests of the Democrat Party at all times, and they're attacking Republicans for asking questions. The CNN headline from four minutes ago, FBI Director Ray is facing his harshest GOP critics in Wednesday's hearing. Why don't you just report on what has been learned instead of going immediately for the political slant on the story and making it us against them? Uh, Congressman Tom Tiffany this morning in the 6 a.m. hour. Actually, it's a big part of the election I- interference. When people talk about election interference, that was election interference, where they did not allow this information to come out in 2020 that could have affected the 2020 election. And that is election interference when uh, the FBI contacts Jack Dorsey and his Twitter operation. Uh, Dorsey, a uh, Democrat, apparatchik, sent a billionaire, and uh, they get a hold of the people at Facebook, and they tell them, oh, no, this has all the earmarks of Russian disinformation. You must not let people share this because, you know, it's the age of misinformation and disinformation. And, and keep in mind that Benito Mussolini describes fascism as a merger of state and corporate power. And the Democrat Party, the left, have uh, implemented a merger in the United States of America of state and corporate power all over the place. Look at Jeff Bezos and the Washington Post. Look at, at CNN. I mean, come on, look at MSNBC and NBC. Uh, it goes on and on. Uh, and it's the information oligarchs that the Democrat Party has co-opted. And just like with the Nazi Party, the Socialist Workers Party of Adolf Hitler, some of the corporate chieftains go along hap- happily and willingly. And others might need some coercion, some threats. Listen, if you don't do what we want, you'll pay a price one way or the other. Uh, Congressman Tiffany from Wisconsin this morning. The problem is they're not going after Russia, China, Iran. They're going after the American people. They go after uh, parents at school board meetings. They're going after conservative Catholics. They're going after Americans, not the foreign interests that they really should be focused on. Catholics and school board meetings, and everybody's an extremist unless you're a Democrat and, you know, sacking and plundering Louis Vuitton and Lululemon and burning the Church of the Presidents. You know, but you get a million-dollar fine for the Proud Boys because they tore down a $40 banner at a church in Washington, D.C. Church of the Presidents set on fire by an arsonist. No arrests, no million-dollar fines, no charges. It's fine. The left. And uh, you remember the attorney general said they couldn't find, and uh, more than 300 just Catholic churches alone attacked and vandalized since the leak at the Supreme Court by a Democrat uh, working for Sonia Sotomayor. Uh, let's go to the hearing from this morning. Congressman Matt Gates of Florida, who's a ton of fun, uh, with Christopher Ray, the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, such as it is. You preside over the FBI that has the lowest level of trust in the FBI's history. People trusted the FBI more when J. Edgar Hoover was running the place than when you are. And the reason is because you don't give straight answers. You give answers that, that later a court deems aren't true. And then at the end of the day, you won't criticize an obvious shakedown when it's directly in front of us. And it appears as though you're whitewashing the conduct of corrupt people. Respectfully, Congressman, in your home state of Florida, the number of people applying to come work for us and devote their lives working for us is over up over 100 percent. We're deeply proud state. of them and they deserve better than you. Isn't it bizarre that he was able to whip out a statistic out of Florida, the number of people applying to work for the FBI out of the state of Florida? He had that at the ready. What a bizarre statistic to have on a sheet of paper at his fingertips. That's quite peculiar, isn't it? Matt Gates taking it to him. And, of course, yeah, uh, greater confidence in the FBI under J. Edgar Hoover also known as Mary, and uh, made FBI Director for Life by Lyndon Baines Johnson. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, and that's his response, is, oh, yeah? Applications to the FBI in your state of Florida are up over 100%. What does that have to do with anything? And what a bizarre statistic to have available. What a weird rejoinder. And uh, you could hear the sneer on his face, couldn't you? 
It's audible. Hey, do you have uh, smelly odors in your home or your office that you just can't get rid of no matter what you try? Now you can get rid of any stinky odor with the Eden Pure Thunderstorm Air Purifier. The thunderstorm gets rid of strong odors from cooking, cigarette smoke, litter boxes, trash cans, even the mildewy smell from basements. You know, no match for the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. It'll even match Michael Moore and his odor. That's a terrible thing. The thunderstorm starts working in seconds to clear any room of any odor. Plus, there are no costly filters to buy and replace ever, you know, on a schedule, mailing away for them, paying for them. Nuh-uh, not with the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. More than 350,000 thunderstorms already sold, two of them in my house. Five-star reviews all over the place on Al Gore's amazing internet. Works like a champ. And this week only, I've got a great deal for you. To get your own thunderstorm, right now you can save 200 American dollars on three Eden Pure Thunderstorms for whole home protection. Make one a gift. Put one in your teenager's room. But the three units for under 200 American dollars. All you have to do is go to EdenPureDeals.com, EdenPureDeals.com, and enter the code CHRIS. That's me. That's EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is CHRIS, plus you get free shipping. Yes, sir. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got more Matt Gates coming up, the, uh, the FBI hearing, where he will answer nothing. The Democrats will try to disrupt it. Because, you know, the only reason the Democrats would disrupt this is because they know that the FBI's dirty deeds are serving the interests of the Democrat Party. Hey, Chris here with some exciting news. Now you can listen to me live on the WMAL app. Doesn't matter if you're in your car, in the office, on the go. The WMAL app delivers crystal clear, around-the-clock news coverage anywhere with cell service or Wi-Fi. So don't miss a second of your favorite shows. Download the WMAL app today on the Apple App Store or at Google Play Store. So we've got uh, a bit more Matt Gates coming up uh, for you with Christopher Ray, And then uh, the inchworm, Adam Schiffless, uh, is in the hearing room also. And he, of course, is like, aren't white people the real problem in America? Don't they have to be stopped? Extremism is everywhere. And it's like, well, yeah, you mean uh, all the looting and the... The theft that's so rampant, the carjacking, the the gun crime, is that what you're talking about? Or, or some mythical, scary thing? And it's the, mis- the mythical, scary thing. Uh, also, coming up, we've got a uh, fun story about a Georgia state representative. Newsmax has the story. Ditching the Democrat Party for the Republican Party. We have her coming up. Uh, Democrats are very angry with her. Because she's African-American. And, you know, the Democrats, they've got a high fence around the Democrat Party plantation. And they don't like people escaping. That's coming up. Can you briefly describe for us what the effect would be on our national security and on our domestic tranquility if the FBI were to be defunded or dismantled? Uh, Congressman Hank Johnson, Democrat from Georgia, uh, in the hearing today, putting questions to FBI Director Christopher Wray. You know, the F- uh, the FBI uh, leadership has been so corrupt and so corrupted and tampering in presidential elections. And, and uh, it's well established that this is the case. This is not some idle barb being thrown in their direction. And we played the audio of Congressman Jim Jordan ticking off the FBI's involvement in presidential politics, always to the benefit of the Democrat Party and to the detriment of the the Republican Party. Uh, why do you think Joe Biden's in the White House? Says Russian has all the earmarks of Russian disinformation, the Hunter Biden laptop and all that stuff, right? And um, so that's uh, Hank Johnson. And he had... He had some uh, probing questions about uh, Republicans saying that funding should be stripped away from the FBI because of the corrupt role that they have 
been playing their turning into the KGB uh, and working on behalf of the Democrat Party. Uh, it's the merger of state and corporate power uh, on uh, uh, level after level, really. And Hank Johnson, you may remember Hank Johnson, Congressman Hank Johnson, the the Democrat from Georgia. He's the one when it was the commander of the Pacific, the military. We used to call him the Sink Pack, but they're not called Sinks anymore. Commander in the Pacific, the four-star admiral, was appearing before a congressional committee. They were talking about moving additional Marines to the island of Guam, which is, of course, a volcanic island, and if you remove the ocean, it would be a mountain, you see. But Hank Johnson was concerned that it's like a Frisbee in the swimming pool and it might flip over. My fear is that uh, the whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over and, uh, and capsize. He's using his hands like this. He's got his hands up and it's like, it's, he doesn't realize that if you, if you suck the ocean out of there, it would be a mountain going to the ocean floor. It's an island in the Pacific. He doesn't understand volcanoes or uh, geology or uh, pretty much anything. Uh, and uh, the poor admiral had to look around for a minute, uh, hoping that everybody was going to start laughing and, and he had learned that it was a joke. Um, and then uh, the admiral said, well, uh, that is not a concern. That's not a con- And we're not concerned. The island will flip over if there are too many Marines on one side of the island. It's not going to flip over, right? And then, of course, he really he, he has a, uh, a happy side to Congressman Hank Johnson because... Like, you know, his inner child comes out every now and then, and he loves a balloon. He loves Imagine, a balloon. Mr. Speaker, a world without balloons. Imagine a world without balloons. There was a congressional hearing. And he keeps coming back. He's reelected time and again. It's an extraordinary thing. But Hank Johnson is there today in the hearing room as well, and he's there to defend, not to defund. They defund police all over the country. Uh, leading to untold numbers of murders. It's impossible to calculate. But the Democrat Party is responsible for that. the spike in homicides in city after city, defunding the police, the letting criminals go, uh, all, of, uh, all of that good stuff. But Hank Johnson today in the hearing with the FBI. We are here today because MAGA Republicans will do anything to protect Donald Trump, their savior. What? No matter how unfounded or dangerous it may be to what? do so. What? Welcome to the legislative arm of the Trump re-election campaign. What? What are you? What are you babbling about? Uh, yeah, they have no interest in playing their constitutional role of uh, you know checks and balances the the legislature, the the Congress, holding the executive branch accountable because the Democrat Party knows that the FBI has been doing their bidding for them. And so the FBI will, uh, the, the, the Democrats rather, will disrupt this hearing. They will, they will fluff and massage the FBI because they know that the FBI has been in their corner and they expect that the FBI will continue to be in their corner. And the smug and sneering FBI director, Christopher Wray, um, is, is there to keep the, well, to maintain the status quo. Matt um, yeah, and uh, we, we also had it, it, uh, uh, Hank Johnson, it's, oh, the Republicans want to defund the FBI, defund. But let's get to, let's get back to Matt Gates. Uh, the Democrats want to make sure that the, the FBI remains unmolested because they have become agents of the Democrat Party. And so, and they, uh, it's not like we don't have example after example after example of, of precisely that. Tragically, we've got whistleblowers on Capitol Hill uh, laying that out. And so the Democrats attack the whistleblowers. They attack the members of Congress to whom the whistleblowers bring their cases. Um, Congressman Matt Gates from Florida in the hearing with Christopher Wray, FBI director, today. I'm sitting here with my father. I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows and my ability to forever hold a grudge. Pause that a sec. This is Matt Gates reading the Hunter Biden communication. Hunter Biden communicating with a Chinese business executive. Uh, 
and uh, telling him that he's sitting there with his father, who at the time was the former vice president and future president of the United States, Joseph Robinette Biden. And um, and he's reading, Matt Gates is reading the Hunter Biden missive to the Chinese, who's affiliated with the Communist Party, business executive, uh, when the Biden family is taking in millions of dollars from communist China and not declaring themselves to be uh, foreign agents violating the FARA Act. But, of course, Gal Luft, the Israeli-American, is being charged with failing to register as a foreign agent under FARA. He's being charged with um, working with the Chinese government, which is kind of ironic given these are precisely the things that Hunter Biden, according to documents, is guilty of as well. It has certainly been accused of, and there's plenty of documentation. So let's get back to Matt Gates reading from Hunter Biden's missive. That you will regret not following my direction. I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father. Sounds like a shakedown, doesn't it, Director? I'm not going to get into commenting on that. You, you, you seem deeply uncurious about it, don't you? Almost suspiciously uncurious. Are you protecting the Bidens? A- absolutely not. The FBI well, does not the que- has no Hold interest on. in You won't answer the question about whether or not that's a shakedown, and everybody knows why you won't answer it. Because to, ev- to the millions of people who will see this, they know it is. And your inability to acknowledge that is deeply revealing about you. Deeply revealing, and uh, it's a shakedown. And uh, I'm, I'm threatening my father is sitting next to me, and he's going to be very unhappy. And all of this is considered to be okay. And, and if we only had a media, well, first of all, the Democrats are happy about it, and, and I don't know how corrupt you have to be. Uh, at least one Democrat should break, break ranks with the party and come out and say, listen, I'm a Democrat and I'm a loyal Democrat. But this FBI has behaved inappropriately going to Twitter and Facebook on the lead up to the election in 2020 and and misinforming them, providing them with disinformation that the articles in the New York Post about the laptop, which the FBI had in its possession and had for quite some time, about a year they knew that it was the real laptop. They knew the emails were real. They had already interviewed Tony Bobolinsky for hours with a, a CEO of one of the Biden family's many phony corporations. Uh, just, just extraordinary. Um, and uh, Chris Frey well, I'm not going to answer that. Well, then what the hell are you doing here? You're here. You're under oath. What, what did you think we were going to talk about? Oh, we're not protecting anybody. That's why I'm not going to answer the questions, because I'm not, I'm not protecting anybody. Daryl Issa from California um, asked Christopher Ray about, you know, there's this Ray Epps guy. Ray Epps, I mentioned yesterday or day before, is now suing the Fox News channel because they showed the video of him inciting violence on January 6th and on January 5th. We're going into the Capitol, and uh, there have been a lot of stories that he may have a relationship with the FBI. And Congressman Daryl Issa from California asked Christopher Wray about January 6th, and there are a lot of questions about whether they had agents and agents provocateur in the crowd that day. How many individuals were either FBI uh, employees or people that the FBI had made contact with were in the January 6th I bet he won't uh, answer. entry of the Capitol and surrounding area. What do you well, think? I really need to be careful here talking about uh, where we have or have not used confidential human sources. Was there, one or, more, was there or one or more individuals that would fit that description on January 6th that were in or around the Capitol? I, I believe there is a, uh, a filing in one of the January 6th cases that can provide a little more information about this, and I'm happy to see if we can follow back up with you. I, I just want to answer, answer, you answer was there it? one or more. I mean, you would know if there was at least one individual who worked for the FBI who, who entered the Capitol on that day. Uh, I can't, again, I just can't speak to that here, but can't speak to it here. Now, that's yes. 
All right. Was there one or more? That's in Washington. That means yes. In government land, that means yes, there were FBI agents, employees, or operatives who are not official employees of the FBI in the crowd and uh, presumably going into the Capitol. And then you want to ask specifically about Ray Epps, who is now suing the Fox News Channel because it worked out so well for Dominion uh, and the hundreds of millions of dollars. And and I, uh, when I was talking about it, I guess it was day before yesterday, welcomed the lawsuit because now Fox gets to uh, call FBI leadership in to testify under oath and, and all kinds of good things can come of that. Now, let's go to this nice lady uh, from Georgia. Uh, Misha Maynor is her name, M-A-I-N-O-R. And she is a lifelong Democrat, Georgia State Representative, who has decided to, as the headline at Newsmax.com says, Georgia State Rep Maynor ditches Democrats for GOP. Republicans holding a majority in the Georgia House of Representatives gained a seat Tuesday when Misha Maynor left the Democratic Party to join the GOP. And here is uh, Misha Maynor. She last night was on the Fox News Channel for a on the Sean Hannity program for a very brief uh, period. Here's Misha Maynor. The two things that I have actually run on in my district in Atlanta is education and public safety. Um, it doesn't matter what part of my district that people are in. Parents are asking for choices right now. There are schools that only 3% of children can are meeting proficiency. That's not acceptable. The option that the Democrats are giving is keep them there until we fix it. We'll get it better soon. But it's been like that for 50 years. That's exactly right. She summed it up beautifully, I've got to say. Now, they're especially angry. She's an African-American woman. Uh, and uh, that always makes the Democrats particularly angry. And they called them names like traitor and, you know, they, what else, they call them all kinds of things, Oreos, and they, they call them racial slurs, the Democrats do, uh, when you're African-American and you don't you know, sing from their sheet music when you wander off the plantation. Uh, Misha Maynard on the Democrats had 3% proficiency. And, and she's absolutely, and they say, oh, leave it that way till we fix it. But it's been that way for 50 years, for half a century. Thanks for noticing. Um, Misha Maynard, welcome to the Republican Party. Public safety. Um, the Democrats wanted to defund the police. Um, I was on Twitter with one of my former colleagues the other day, and she said, I never voted not to defund the police. And um, some constituents brought up her vote and said, this is the vote that you did. So... We need to yeah. make some changes, and I'm happy to do so. Uh, good for her. I just, you know, to become a thinking person, and that's a wonderful thing. Let's uh, grab a quick uh, phone call. Let's go to Jonathan calling from Centerville, Virginia. Jonathan, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Christopher, two yes, times sir. in as many months. How are you, my friend? Very well, very well, Jonathan. I, I don't have a ton of time, but I wanted to get you in here. Yes, sir. So I, I, I couldn't help but be reminded when you played that Christopher Ray bit with Matt, Matt Getz, and he couldn't, he couldn't answer the question of why they were protecting the Bidens. Uh, Fifteen-second history, uh, George Washington in the 1750s was fighting the French and Indian War for the Redcoats, and he noticed uh, that, that he and all the colonial militiamen were treated as second-class citizens. They, the, the, the colonial officers were, were treated as subjugate to, to the, the silliest lieutenant in the, the red coat military. Now, that's a double standard, I would argue, right? Sure. And 20, 20 years later, so George Washington filed that away. He resigned his commission after being a, a, a military hero for the British. He filed that away, and 20 years later, he, he, he headed a revolution. To, to grant us our independence. How in the world is this scenario where we have these political elites that can get away with murder? It, how is that a different scenario than what we went through 200 and almost 50 years ago? Well, you know, uh, the Benjamin Franklin, of course, uh, famously said upon coming out of the uh, Constitutional Convention, uh, what do we have? Uh, a republic, if you can keep it, right? And uh, the the... The brilliant founders of this country, Jefferson and Adams and Madison and the boys, 
They knew that we were going to have to fight for it forever, that uh, we would have to guard it jealously to protect the republic, to protect the Constitution, to protect the Bill of Rights. And we started the show today with Mike the Lib going after the Second Amendment and the the Supreme Court, uh, the Bill of Rights and the branches of government, and the Democrats want to pack the Supreme Court. And uh, the left is here. These are not liberals. This is the left. And we're going to have to continue to fight to preserve the republic the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. And sometimes it's going to be against government officials, the Democrat Party in the House of Representatives, and the FBI director in today's case. Kamala Harris yesterday was at a, uh, a vice presidential event where they are talking about transportation. It's uh, She didn't know much about it, but she... She wanted to explain what transportation is to the people there, and maybe it was on a cue card they were trying to explain it to her. I again want to thank the Secretary for your work. Uh, this issue of transportation is fundamentally about just making sure that people have the ability to get where they need to go. <laughs> it's that basic. That's right. It's, it's about transportation. It's getting the, It's like Joe Biden going from place to place. He can be president. He's just not good at going from play. Congressman James Comer is um, is the oversight guy. And, um, you know, Gal Luft, the Israeli-American who has now been indicted eight counts, could face 100 years in prison because he blew the whistle on Biden family corruption going all the way back to 2019 when he went to the FBI in Brussels, Belgium of all places, to fill them them in on what he knew. And then uh, the Biden family charged him with uh, with crimes. Uh, it's quite extraordinary. Uh, James Comer is moving that ball forward, and we'll have more for that. Uh, uh, we'll have more for you on that tomorrow. Um, amazing stuff. Lots of amazing stuff. And um, John Kerry talking about the weather again. You know he's crazy about the weather, isn't he? We'll see you back here tomorrow. <laughs> 